been a huge transformation in the business aviation world. It's been in a, on a lot of different ways. One is the average age of the buyer. Normally it was the Fortune 1000 companies and these always were the buyers of all the airplanes around. Now it's become much more entrepreneurial of a buyer. There have been individuals who have started companies in one, two, three years old and these companies become the buyers of the airplanes. Second of all, people always started earlier with smaller airplanes and slowly, gradually grew up to a mid-sized airplane, a large airplane, and then an ultra-long range airplane. Today, a lot more people go right to a larger airplane. The other thing is where the airplanes are being sold to. In 1975, 1980, 80% of the jets were going to America, and about 15, 18% were in Europe, and the rest were the rest of the world, two or 3%. Today, America is about 55%, Europe is about 20%, and then you have about 20, 25% through the rest of the world. I think the major trends are in the US you have, it's such a big country, so there's a lot of intercontinent travel. With the Europeans, there's a lot more long distance um, to Asia or to the US. I think the same with the Asians. What you find with the Asians is that very often they will fly in with an airline and then they'll pick up a private jet in Europe. And the other difference that you see between those markets is that the US market um, it's been it's a common way of transportation in the sense that it's more like a point from A to B to get from A to B so they are less fussed about um, luxury whereas you find with the European market and the Asian market they are more fussed about um, catering and the interior of the aircraft it's a little bit more luxurious I find. Je pense qu'il y a des nouveaux clients qui arrivent dans le, dans le marché euh, de l'aviation privée avant il y avait un grand gap entre l'aviation commerciale et l'aviation privée et je pense qu'aujourd'hui ce gap se se rétrécit et puis on essaie vraiment de proposer des solutions à la location qui sont des alternatives presque à la business ou à la first class de l'aviation commerciale. Il y a des nouvelles tentatives avec, euh, avec l'utilisation disons de, de la technologie pour mettre en relation, faire un peu du covoiturage, du co-jetage si on peut dire, euh, où, euh, où le but est justement d'utiliser les avions euh, privés euh, un peu comme les avions commerciaux, donc de partager les avions entre plusieurs personnes, euh, des sortes de shuttle entre des, des, points, euh, des points qui sont euh, so no matter what somebody has, it's never exactly what somebody wants uh, as far as a seller versus a buyer. So what, you always have to have some trade-offs uh, when you're a buyer. You want the best airplane and the best price, but then you have to change some of the interior configuration for your desired colors and layout. This is the challenge of trying to find the exact middle ground of an airplane that fits price specifications, hours, year, with the cosmetics? Well, I think the advantages of owning a private jet is that you get to choose your aircraft. So you get to choose the interior, you get to choose your crew. Whenever you go into the aircraft, you have the same faces. You have a lot more flexibility because uh, you can just call on your crew and you can jump on your plane and you can go. The disadvantage, of course, is the cost impact that you have uh, with the private jet, so you have to put a down payment quite far in advance. The costs of the aircraft are yours um, and they are there. Whereas if you're chartering or sharing a jet, of course, it's ad hoc, so you pay as you go. Um, the advantage of chartering a jet as well is that if you're flying from Paris to Nice and you are two people, you can choose to go with a smaller jet. Whereas if you have a nice bigger aircraft, whether you fly in the small hole or the longer haul, you kind of tend to go with your air own aircraft. So I think that the cost impact with charter, there is a certain uh, flexibility, there is a certain uh, less of a, of a burden on you. Je pense que les enjeux du secteur avec, euh, avec l'arrivée du digital, pour les utilisateurs, je pense que c'est vraiment euh, une opportunité, euh, puisque euh, ça leur permet euh, d'avoir des accès différents à l'aviation, que ce soit sur le marché de la location, sur le marché de l'acquisition aussi, des outils différents qui leur permettent d'être plus euh, en contrôle au fait de leurs de leur dépenses. Je pense que vraiment la force de, de sociétés comme, comme MySky ou comme d'autres acteurs sur, sur, sur le marché actuellement, c'est d'utiliser vraiment cette technologie, cet aspect technologique pour amener cette efficience qui n'est pas possible euh, avec, euh, avec l'aspect manuel ou euh, comme, comme ça a été fait d'une façon plus, moins automatisée, disons, et moins technologique. I thought that since 50% of the world market is outside the United States, and a lot of these buyers and sellers were ignored by a lot of the American aircraft brokers. 
So we decided to open in London and try to get more face-to-face -face, um, communication and interaction with these buyers and sellers because we think that that kind of a personable uh, relationship is much more important when we're talking about 20, 30 or 50 million euro airplanes. La Suisse souffre un petit peu euh, comparé à beaucoup de nouvelles juridictions, que ce soit Malte, l'île de Mans ou des choses comme ça, qui proposent des, des structures vraiment compétitives et simples aussi pour les propriétaires. L'aviation d'affaires, je pense qu'il joue un rôle quand même majeur sur l'économie euh, genevoise et pas forcément euh, mise en avant, je pense aujourd'hui, dans la stratégie euh, de l'aéroport de Genève.